Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you all with us. The IPCC, which is the Inter Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, released a new report. The last report showed us the dangers of a 1.5 Celsius degree rise in temperatures and what that could do to us when it is doing to us. This new report, called Climate Change and the Land, shows the disastrous results of how two very complicated issues intersect to endanger our future. It focuses on how our use of the land contributes to climate change and how climate change affects the land. As climate change makes farming more difficult, our methods of farming also devastate the wetlands, forests, rainforests, which exacerbates and increases the intensity of climate change itself. The end of the report offered some solutions, but we'll explore what all that means in this conversation with our guest, Diana Ruiz. Diana Ruiz is the senior palm oil campaigner for Greenpeace USA. She's based in DC. Uh, and she's leading the work to make zero deforestation in Indonesia a reality, no easy task. She has worked to make change and hold the United States corporations accountable in countries including Indonesia, India, Peru, and Ecuador. And Diana focuses on the range of issues that draw from industrial chemical systems to pesticide regulations, climate mitigation, and adaptation, which means that uh, she's a very busy woman and took time to talk to us today. And Diana Ruiz, welcome, good to have you with us. Yeah, th thank you for having me. So let me begin by showing this clip uh, that uh, actually is at the from the IPCC report itself when they offer the report. And this is one of the co-chairs of the report giving her kind of an uh, overview of what the report is. The way we produce food and what we eat contributes to the loss of natural ecosystems and declining biodiversity. When land is degraded, it reduces the soil's ability to take up carbon and this exacerbates climate change. In turn, climate change exacerbates land degradation in many different ways. Today, 500 million people live in areas that experience desertification. People living in already degraded or desertified areas are increasingly negatively affected by climate change. So that, that was the co-chair of the IPCC. And so let's talk a bit about what she was saying. This is the overarching look at the report because it, it does something that I think that has been very hard to do. I understand the report had over 170 people and 7,000 research projects they put together to come up with this report. But showing the interaction between uh, the Earth itself uh, and the climate change and how they interact is something that most people, most people have not yet really considered in terms of looking at what we face for the future. Yes, the, the IPCC land report really exposes the reality facing the world's forests and how we use our land for key agricultural commodities that, you know, that are used in, uh, in, in everything we consume and also in uh, beauty products. For example, um, you know, palm oil is one of those key drivers of, of deforestation that is putting a lot of stress on lands, um, especially in Southeast Asia, and you know, soy is is another one of uh, is another uh, key agricultural commodity, um, along with the production of meat and dairy. So, I mean, one of the things what you just said to me is kind of one of the glaring pieces. On the one hand, you have this report talking about palm oil production and production that has nothing to do with eating or the food that we consume, but is completely corporate-driven in terms of what they're trying to sell to the world, like palm oil, uh, devastating rainforests to build these giant plantations. But even here in the United States, the report shows that, uh, I think it said we had 591 million acres in cropland, but only one-fifth of that land is used to grow crops that feed human beings. The rest are soy and corn for industrial use and to feed livestock like pigs and cattle. I mean, so it, it really... In many ways, we can talk about the desperation of people and what they're trying to farm around the world, but in many ways, this, this problem is being driven, it seems to me, uh, by corporations, the need for profit, what to sell us. Well, you, you bring up that, uh, a good point when you look at the United States. You know, what we're seeing now is more of an increase, and it's not just the United States. You're seeing it in, in Brazil. You're seeing it in other parts of, of the world, but the intensity and the increase of, for example, soy um, and palm oil that is being produced to feed cattle um, or poultry as part of feed. And it's, it's that part of 
that's that that sick system of the way um, you know agricultural production for these types of commodities is is aggressively converting land. We're, we're at a critical point where we face a limited amount of land um, that is gonna, that is having huge implications on the security of of the future of our of, of the production of food. I mean, so, so not only does the deforestation of our planet to, to create these plantations, um, I mean, create greater pollution because of the methane and everything else that it releases, um, and when you destroy wetlands, I was surprised to see how much more in gigatons that it releases the atmosphere, uh, that, and, and you know, that, uh, on top of what's happening with our fossil fuels to get us from place to place, and and that I mean that, and that's something I I think people don't really kind of put their hands around yet is the extent to which how we farm and what we farm actually does contribute to the pollution that we're facing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, agriculture is, is one of the, it, it is the leading driver of, of deforestation. Um, together with forestry and other land use, um, you know, it, it represents 23% of, of human greenhouse gas emissions. So, so the question is, well, let's take a look. This is an interesting clip. This has to do with soil devastation and that came out of this report. And this is a, uh, a, a British uh, scientist and we'll, we'll watch what she has to say. Life is at risk ultimately. And that's because all the things that we take for granted, resources that are more at the top of people's minds like water and air, healthy air, et cetera, are um, related to healthy soils. Unfortunately, because we've not been looking after soils, we've been taking out more than we've been putting in. But if we year on year don't return 30% of all organic matter that we take out of the soil, we don't return it to the soil, then we see soil degradation because that organic matter is the glue that holds the little bits of rock, the minerals together. So and that was Sarah Johnson, uh, Karen Johnson, excuse me, who's a professor of uh, environmental engineering. Um, but, but so what she describes here has a couple of, I mean, really attacks things in a couple of ways. I want you to comment on this. I mean, one has to do what they're doing to the soil itself and what that's releasing into the atmosphere, but also destroying the soil so we can't grow things. But B, one of the things that sidebars all this, and major one, it forces migration because people aren't going to sit around and just starve to death. They're going to go somewhere to find food. So, it, I mean, it, so it hits the earth and our countries in more than one way. Yeah, it increases uh, the the conversion of more land for agricultural use, um, and the the issue raised around soils, you know, is um, you know it, it just underscores the importance that forests play in regulating our climate, as forests, you know, are you know are are a safety net. For, for for humans and for all all and and for living uh, all all living uh, beings, and you know forests you know are you know breathe in carbon. They're able to absorb carbon. Um, they end up regulating um, our atmosphere. And there's 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 uh, some forests that are very carbon rich. Uh, for example, peatland forest, um, and you know, peatland forest uh, are are it are is an ecosystem that you know that is is con that is being threatened by uh, by palm oil plantations, and you see a similar uh, situation in Brazil with uh, the savanna grasslands known as the Cerrado that is also has rich, carbon rich soils that is, that is, is also being uh, cleared for, you know, for uh, cattle grazing. Um, so, you know, th that's part of, you know, the, that's part of the story of, of how we, you know, how we're, uh, um, getting to like just certification uh, of these lands and um, because essentially with with uh, forest areas that are very carbon rich like peatlands you're essentially 
detonating a carbon bomb when you clear when you when you when you drain those peatlands and then you clear that land for um you know for agricultural production what was also shocking on top of that when and part of that is to, is to raise cattle and to raise other other livestock that what i think i read in the report was that, that that was equivalent to releasing as much methane in the air as 600 million cars released re, 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 released in the air. I mean, not not methane, but so so that that to me those are shocking numbers. So the question becomes: the end of the report, they really try to wrestle with what to do and how to mitigate this and how to change this. But I must say that having read reading the last part of the report. Um, it didn't leave me in a really good mood, nor very sanguine about what the future might hold. I mean, because what it will take to stop this is like a major change in our culture and our, not just the corporate world, but our, but our culture, the way we eat, the way we think what we need, that, that corporations keep pushing on us about what they think we need. So, I mean, this is a real, and I think this is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's something that we don't understand, I think, the depth of danger we're facing. Yes, no, uh, I, we agree completely. I, I, I think what the report underlines is the consequences and the urgency. Um, I, I think everyone has a role to play. I think as consumers, we have a role not just in terms of shifting our consumption pattern, but we also have a role of putting pressure on these companies. Because as long as you are a company that is making multi-billion dollars off of um, you know, snack foods where the key ingredient is palm oil, then you need to change course. And what changing course means is you need to change your business model so that you're operating under, you know, in, that you're operating under environmental boundaries, that you're taking, you know, the needs of the planet into consideration now because time is running out and it's, it's no, it's it's about stopping deforestation, but it's also about forest restoration. Right, I think it's also kind of very clearly shows that uh, there, there have to be some fairly radical measures on this planet if we're going to save ourselves and the earth that we live on. Um, and I think that's 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 part of what we're going to be facing. All these elections taking place here in the United States, across the globe, um, and it's, it's includes a really serious matter. And I, I deeply appreciate the work you do, by the way. Uh, at, at Greenpeace, Diana Ruiz, and thank you so much for taking your time with us today. And uh, I look forward to talking to you a great deal more as we kind of explore this report in greater depth. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Good to have you with us. Please let us know what you think. Give us some of your ideas. Take care. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.